we have an epidemic of vitamin D deficiency. And now we're finding out that some people are overcompensating and they're taking too much vitamin D and getting into problems with that. Now remember the story of the three bears, Goldilocks and the three bears, and she tried the papa bear's porridge and it was too hot, and the mama bear's porridge was too cold, and the baby bear's was just right. Well, that's what we need with vitamin D when we take a dosage. We need the amount that's just right. So, what is just right? <laughs> oh, that's so good, Vicki. That's such a simple way to understand it. That's a beautiful story. Well, the study was done uh, years ago using large amounts of vitamin D and seeing what happened to people, and not much did. And uh, they didn't really look at all-cause mortality. They just look, looked to see how people did for a period of weeks to months. And taking doses of even 40 or 50,000 units a day for a few weeks didn't seem to be a problem. Now, we're comparing that to like 400 that's in a glass of milk? It might be something. Well, not quite that much, but yes. So 400, and now we're talking 40,000. 40,000. So it's, it's a lot uh, of uh, vitamin D to be taking. Now, there are times when you might want to take a large dose of vitamin D because you're willing to pay the consequences of possible side effects that could occur. Like, for example, if you had cancer. I've heard some anecdotal stories of people who are taking 50,000 units a day of cancer, and lo and behold, their cancer seems to be going away or held in check. Whether that's a coincidence or if there's an association isn't really known. For some people who have an acute viral infection, say if the swine flu was really something to worry about and people were dying from it, there are people who believe that if you took 50 or 100 or 150,000 international units a day for a few days, that that might be a wise thing. But that's just for a few days. And we're not giving that as advice. This is information for you to digest and talk over with your own healthcare practitioner because we're not your doctors. But now Vicki is talking about what about the toxicity? Is it really something we have to worry about? Is there any new evidence out there? And there's a study from Denmark, from Copenhagen, that showed that they looked at 250,000 people. And what they did is they related the level of vitamin D to all cause mortality. And what they found was that when the levels got really low, like below 20, that the all cause mortality went up a lot. And you're looking at something like uh, one point, or excuse me, 2.3 times the mortality rate of somebody who, say, had a level of about 50, which is in the middle of the normal range. And this level you're talking about is in a lab test, like a blood. That's right, in blood serum. tests that look at 25 hydroxy vitamin D levels. And they also found that if your level was over 140, which is in, clearly in the t what we call the toxic range, that the risk of death was 1.4 times. So we have both ends of this curve showing increase in mortality. But we don't really know why that's the case. It's just an association at this point. So it's not a good idea to be taking a lot, and it's like baby bear's porridge. Well, I think, I think that also that there was a study that showed people that took like 2 million uh, units of by vitamin accident. D by accident, they still didn't die. Right. They, so. Obviously, it's a problem. And one of the issues you get into with this is that if you're taking huge doses of vitamin D and you're also taking calcium, your calcium is going to be absorbed from the gut at a, at a, at a rate that's frightening. And, and then what happens is instead of the calcium going where you want to, which is in the bones or the right places in the body, it's going to go into the soft tissues like the arteries that supply the brain, the kidney, and the heart. Calcifications. Exactly. <laughs> so leading to heart attacks, strokes, and, and, re and kidney insufficiency. So if you're going to be taking large doses of vitamin D, it's not a good idea to be taking very much in the way of, of, of calcium. Well, also, taking too much vitamin D, can't you get calcification in other places too, like the kidney and the brain, mm -hmm. besides the heart? Mm -hmm. Anywhere yeah. else? Any place else? Any place there's a soft tissue and the there's lungs, a blood I guess. vessel. Yeah. Any place. So you don't want to be taking large doses of vitamin D uh, for a long period of time. Anytime, you know, I'm an orthomolecular doctor, which means I work a lot with cell biochemistry and I use nutrients and vitamins and minerals and supplements rather than using drugs when I can. But I don't believe in, in uh, taking huge doses of anything. I don't think that large doses of any vitamins or minerals or supplements are a good idea unless there's a special reason. And then you have to be willing to take the risk of what that will, will potentially offer you uh, compared to the benefits that you might be able to reap by taking that risk. And also, getting out in the sun is really the best way to get your vitamin D, and you can't get too much vitamin D from being out in the sun. I mean, you could get burned. <laughs> well, your body knows how to regulate that, and that's the key, and that's the part that's always missing. 
So when people come to me and they want to know what kinds of vitamins and minerals and nutrients they should be, or supplements they should be taking, and they fill my desk, okay, with this one and that one because they do all these things, I just start going, oi, my gosh, how are we going to solve this problem? Because they don't have it right. It's much like Vicky said. It's like baby bear's porridge. Just the right amount. And Mother Nature will guide you if you just get a little supplement. 